Hello everyone. My name is Fakhruddin Khambati and welcome to another video in the SSIS training series. In the previous nine videos, we did a lot of things as per our requirements. We did all those things in parts. In this particular video, we are going to repeat all those things right from scratch. So this is going to be a long one. After doing all the stuff that we did in the previous nine videos in detail, I'm going to introduce you with some new topics. After we introduce the new topics, we are going to deploy our project. This is the requirement. If you want, you can go through this particular slide. Uh, but if you prefer like me, I will just take you to the practicals directly. This file that I have, it's a CSV file. It has some columns in it and it has some data. I'm going to make the data inaccurate for some of the rows. And also, it is not just only file. We have 23 such files. We have to pull data from all these files. In other words, in the correct words, we have to extract data from all these files that are in this particular folder. And we have to load that data into a particular database in MySQL server. So the very first thing that I need to do is I need to prepare MySQL server to accept a data which is present in these files. Look at the file again. It has some columns out here. I will have to create a table in my SQL server, which is relevant to these particular columns. So let's go to SQL server. For these, I will create a new database, FK recap SSIS. I'll say OK. And in this particular database, I will create a new table. Now the table, the better part or the recommended thing is to create the table as per the column names that are given in the files. So the mapping gets much more easy. So first, last email, date of birth, amount, city and state. Let's proceed. But there's one column missing out here, which is ID. And I'm going to create the ID column here. ID will be int. Then I'll have first and where care last same nware care and then we have email nware care or we can have this as where care and uh, date of birth here yeah. date of birth this is date and amount which is money uh, if you're creating the database uh, or the table for the very first time please give the data types as I am giving it because it may lead to a lot of errors otherwise. City, where care and state, where care. I'm changing the data types for some of the fields on purpose because it is going to give us errors when we will work on our project. These are intentional errors that I'm going to induce in the project so we can understand the value of uh, how a data type is important. So the ID is going to be primary key and I'm going to make it auto increment. Look over here, identity specification, yes. Identity increment one, which means that even though this value, the ID field, is nowhere present in my source file. It will get automatically created and it will get auto populated with the increment of how much one. And where it will begin from, I can give identity seed as you know, 1000. Because I have not seen an ID that begins with one so far. So yeah, let's keep it 1000 and it will increment by one. And uh, that's it. Let's name this table as customers or in a professional way, TBL customers. So I do have a table as TBL customers. Let's see, select star from TBL customers. It has zero records as of now. Now my aim is to transfer data or extract data from the CSV file into TBL customers. 
So next time when I am done with it when I run this query select star from TBL customers it should give me how much rows around a thousand records that are present in this file so first we will do with a single file and then we will do a loop so that we can extract data from all 23 files in one go and load the data into our SQL this brings us to our main tool which is SQL Server Data Tools embedded under Visual Studio of course and I will say file new project and if you will see business intelligence out here are we doing analysis services no reporting services no integration services which is SSIS integration services and I will say FK recap and deployment create a directory for solution okay here we go this is a very fresh a very new project it has not been manipulated in any way we are going to do this demo right from scratch as I promised and here we go you will see some tabs out here ignore the third fourth and fifth tab as of now so I'll go to SSS toolbox I will drag and drop the data flow task now the moment I double click on data flow task, I will look at this, the tabs, control flow, data flow. The moment I click on data flow task, it will switch to data flow tab, which means whatever I have in control flow, it will call something into data flow. So this is just a container that I have double clicking on it, it will definitely call something out here that I have to define. So what do I have to do? I have to load the CSV file. Let's see what options we have now notice that the SSS toolbox over here when we have the control flow tab selected is different. The moment we go to data flow it changes. So the options that we have out here what we have to do is we have to go to source source is what a flat file destination. Right. Sorry not a destination source is going to be a flat file source. So we'll come to sources, flat file source, and then we'll go to OLEDB destination. And I'll just add the arrow like this. These are clueless uh, objects. They do not know what to do as of now. That is why we have to show them the path. How we show them the path? I just right click on each and every component and I'll have to configure each and every component that I have in data flow. So control flow has the data flow task. Double clicking on it will get me over here. And in the data flow, any component that I drag and drop, I'll have to configure it. How to configure any component by right clicking, selecting edit. But before we do that, there's one important thing that I did not discuss in the previous videos. It is a good practice to name each and every component that you are dragging and dropping. For example, this data flow task that I'm dragging and dropping, I can just say DFT underscore load CSV files. Or I can give a better name out here data flow task underscore ETL. And flat file source, I can also rename it. load csv files let's just file for now and destination o o l e d b underscore load sql so it's good practice to name your components once i name it i will just configure these components because remember i told you it they are clueless right now so edit Connection manager, I'll say new flat file connection manager and FFCM underscore con for CSV. And I'll have to browse and show it the destination where my file is saved. So let me go to the folder. I'll quickly come here, copy the file. Here it is. And I'll say CSV files. The moment I do CSV files, I have 23 files over here. 
I'll just select the first one customers and I'll say open. So right now I am linking it only to a single file for the demo purpose. Later we are going to loop it to all the 23 files. I'll say column names in the first data row. Why will I say that? Because there are column names. You see this first last that is not the actual data. Those are the column names and that is why I just used the column names in the first data row. You can go to column. It will also give you an instant preview of it. Uh, if the column delimiter is something else than a comma, you see right now the column delimiter is a comma. Right? You see this? There is a comma separated by every data in the column. If it is something else, you can use that. Like if it's a colon, semicolon, tab, vertical bar, whatever it is. Right now it's a comma, so we'll just keep it simple. Uh, advanced, we don't need to do anything right now, but remember this particular option. You can actually change the data type of uh, a field right from here. And preview. Let me take you back to advanced. Just notice the data types. First is string DTSDR, last is string. In fact, everything is string out here. Why everything is string out here? Because it's a plain text file. It's a plain text file that we are loading from. It will not understand that the amount is not supposed to be string. It's supposed to be money. It's a money value or a currency value. The same way it will not understand date of birth is not a string. It it has a particular dedicated data type to it, which is date time or date. So here is what you can check about the data types and you can actually change it from here. But right now I'm not going to do it. I want the error to come so we understand everything much better. Um, did I close it? FFCM underscore con manager. Okay, and okay. FFCM con manager is created. You see the red mark that was there, it's gone. The same thing I'll do with uh, the configuration of this. But before I go ahead for it, I will need to copy and paste my database server name. Right click on it, configure. New. I'll delete whatever is present there because I want to do everything from scratch. New connection manager. I will just give the server name. The moment I enter server name, you see the database name option gets activated. What is my database name that I just got created? FK recap SSIS. FK recap SSIS. And I can do a test connection. Succeeded. And I'll say OK. And I'll say OK. And it will get me back to this OLEB destination editor. Right now, we just configured the connection manager. Now we have to link it to the table. A database can have a hundred tables, a thousand tables. So I will just find out which table I need to link it with. Since we just got it created and it has just one single table, I will just link it to that particular table. We can also do a view existing data because it has no data right now. You can say, see it from here also, execute. It has no data, sorry, it has no data. So that is why it will not show any data out here. Mappings, mappings is very important. Uh, because we use the names as it is, you see the name of the column first, last. I configured my database exactly like that. First, last email date of birth. And that is why it auto mapped the columns by itself if my name or if my column names would had been incorrect or not matching like for the source it is first for database if i would keep it as first name then this link would not be present it would not be present i would have to manually link it like this so mapping is very important. You cannot really just configure any component uh, in the destination without a proper mapping. Uh, errors, we are not doing it as of now. We want it to fail and then we will check it out. It's still showing a red mark. Let's see what's the problem. It says, okay, 
it says column first cannot convert between unicode and non unicode string data types it is an expected error that i wanted now if you remember if i go to right click con manager i do edit i do advance the first name out here is string dtstr but the first name in my sql is nware care dtstr and nware care are not a match and that is why i will have to change it out here i'll have to make it a unicode string same thing i'll have to do for last name okay i'll not do it for last name as of now let it give the error okay the moment i make the change of the data uh, data type it will give me this sign out here warning sign i just have to do right click edit it will give me this pop up and it will say output is first do you want to replace the metadata of output columns i'll say yes and i'll say okay the mark is gone but the error in the database or the oledb component remains let's see the same error it gives for the last name now column last cannot convert between unicode and non unicode string data types exactly the same error i can will do right click here again edit i'll go to advance i'll go to last and i'll convert it into unicode string again i'll do right click over here say yes and okay that is gone and let's see if it gives an error any error or not i'll do a start or i can just hit f5 from the keyboard thousand rows are up from the csv to the sql let's check thousand rows loaded congratulations but i'm going to do some manipulation because i don't want it to succeed i want the error to come for the money data type at least so let's go to csv but before i do that i'll just truncate the table customer and you see now it has zero rows again going back to my csv i'm going to make some changes out here in the amount so i'm going to change it to minus i'm going to change it to 100 i'm going to change it to zero so the first three records i've changed it and i'm going to save it and i'm closing it i'm stopping my visual studio i'm going to run it again now notice this 100 so far it did not give us error because all the data in amount column were numbers be it anything in, including decimals they were numbers but this item that i have changed out here this record it is not a number anymore so my csv my program will attempt to load the csv value 100 into this particular column amount which is money in sql and that is why i'm expecting the error let's see i'll run it again and please give me the error and yes it did give me the error <laughs> let me just minimize everything and uh, now we switch to our progress tab let's see the value cannot be converted that is the error i'm getting and that is correct i will go to control flow data flow i'll stop it and uh, i'll go to sql i'm expecting it has just one record why did it insert one record well because the first record when it inserted it is minus 23 which can be acceptable in the money data type in sql and that is why it took it but the moment it came to second row it gave the er error out here and then the code did not proceed any further it just stopped so that is why i have one record i'm going to truncate it truncate table table customers i will have just zero records now i'll go back to my data tools what do i do <coughs> 
so here I will introduce something called as error handling but before that also understand that we have an opportunity to do something more we can also along with handling the error we can also eliminate or filter the incorrect record the amount should not be in negative as per my requirement the amount should not be zero as per my requirement so this first and the third record should also be eliminated it should not come into sequel also the second record which is 100 that definitely should not get into sequel so what i want is that the incorrect or illogical data should go into a separate file and the incorrect data or the erroneous data should go into a separate file and the rest of the record should go into sql so i'm going to stop it right click delete and i'll go to data tools and there is something called as conditional split which is difficult to search always conditional split i want data to come from there till here and from conditional split over here i'll go to right, right click conditional split which column i want it on i want it on amount what do i want to do with it i want amount should be less than equal to zero it should go to another file so i'll go less than equal to zero okay now when it gives you this red text it means there's some kind of an error now it is asking me to make sure that the amount is not a string data type because on string it cannot really calculate it cannot check whether it's less than equal to zero or not and that is why i'll go back to my connection manager i'll say edit and i'll go to advance and i'll go to amount and here i will change it to currency and i'll say okay i'll right click on it yes and okay everything is gone i'll right click on conditional split now i'll go to column again i'll go to amount and in the operators i want less than or equal to if it's less than or equal to you see the red text is converted into amount sorry the black text and i'll just give the output name as in illogical data illogical data and i'll say okay that's it and i'm going to remove this now in the conditional split when i drag and drop it to sql it will ask me which output you want do you want to put the illogical data into database or this default one so i will say default one and i'll say okay but the illogical data has to go somewhere right and that is why i will get one more option over here flat file destination so whatever the illogical you see there is one more blue arrow out here whatever the illogical data is take it over there let's just rename it fft logical and because there is a red mark it means that it is not configured let's configure it i'll say edit and i'll say a new connection manager for it and it will be a delimited one and ffcm illogical con i'll go to browse and in the same folder i can create a new file a text file which says logical data txt i'll select it it's obviously blank because i just created it i'll say column names in the first data row yes please do that um, nothing as of now no other configuration required i'll say okay mappings it's mapped correctly automatically because the names are obviously the same i'll say okay so now it will load the data from csv file it will take me to conditional split component whatever the illogical the negative records or the zero is it will load that particular data into a text file but whatever the correct data is it will take it into sql but what about the errors what about the files that are with what about the data that is with the erroneous values like 100 for that we will have something called as this red arrow but we need to put that error data into some other 
file as well right so i will drag and drop one more destination out here flat file destination from the load csv file i have one red arrow i will just drag and drop it to this one and it will show me what components you want to take to that particular file so whatever component has the error i'll select everything i will just say redirect row i can do a fail component which means that it will fail uh, the uh, execution of the project i can ignore the failure so it will ignore that row and move on to next one or i will just say redirect row which i will say now i've selected everything i have clicked on redirect row and i'll say apply so everything changed to redirect row i'll say okay and it's going over here I'll right click before that I'll just change it FFT underscore error data right click and give it some sense connection manager delimited FFCM underscore error gone and browse here also I don't have a file for error data I will create a new one error data dot txt select it column names columns 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 that's it okay mapping it will just give me the error code and error column which is good and I'll say okay let's see now the expectation is that it should load the data from CSV file whatever the error records are it should take that particular error code in the error file it will go to conditional split Whatever the correct data is, it will load to SQL. Whatever the illogical data is, which is in the negative amount, why only amount? Because I have only configured the amount over here. It could be some other condition as well that I can give, but right now I have just given the amount and I'll say okay. So whatever the illogical data is, it will load into another CSV file and whatever the correct data is, it will load into SQL. Where in SQL in this TBL customer, and currently there's zero records out here let's run and check if this works so look over here 999 rows has come into conditional split one row is missing why i'm sure about it because i know that i have thousand records over here the csv file each csv file has 1000 records from that 1000 records i have induced an error over here in the second row what error i have entered 100 a text into a field amount which is of the type currency so that row would give the error which means it got filtered at the source then it got, got to conditional split in the conditional split it said that there are two illogical data over here why two illogical data because it's minus and zero why it says it's illogical because i have configured in the conditional split saying if amount is less than or equal to zero which means if it's negative or zero then what you do is you filter that data and take that data into another file and the remaining 1000 minus one minus two remaining is 997 got into sql let's check select star from tbl customers look over here 997 records on the bottom right side 997 records but where are the other two files this file and this file it's over here let's check error data it's giving us the data over here let me just make it a little big for you you see this this particular data the hundred it's also giving us error code and error column error code and error column and illogical data first last you remember I entered minus 23 and 0 it's giving us illogical data over here so I'll just close it so congratulations it worked get, let me get back to requirement uh, I'm done with the first part this one particular line and i'm done with the third part fourth fifth but what about first and last name must be capital that one we missed let's do it getting back to sql server data tools stopping this project going back to sql truncating the table execute making sure it has no records zero records out here 
and need to make some space out here but before that let me check what tool I can use to make the capital data um, it's not conditional split it's not data conversion it's derived column I'll take it over here somewhere over here little bit down deleting it derived column over here changing the name DC underscore capital right click configure why to configure because it does not know anything by itself I will right click and configure what columns do I want in the upper case I want first and last and what function can I use is, is it a string function because I'm changing a string value from lowercase to uppercase yes it is a string function in string what is it uh, it's upper upper what upper first then I will do one more upper upper what upper last and it will give me an option out here that replace first replace last what do you want to do I will just say replace first and replace last and I'll say okay that's it let me go back to SQL make sure it's zero it's zero um, let me just delete the data from this files the error file as well as illogical file going back to my project now the expectation is it will load data from CSV uh, whatever the error data is incorrect data is it will take into a particular error file uh, that error file is in my folder I have given it a path by showing it where it has to go using a connection manager after filtering the error data it will come to this derived column in the derived column it will change the first and last names from lowercase into up completely uppercase after doing that it will go to conditional split in conditional split it will filter the data which is illogical it will filter the negatives and the zeros why it will filter only negatives and zeros because and why it will filter only the amount because I've configured conditional split that way whatever the illogical data is it will save that particular data into illogical data file which I have already configured and via configuration of this particular connection manager I have shown it which where is the path for that illogical file text file and finally after filtering after making it into capital case after doing the conditional split it will load the remaining rows into my Microsoft SQL server and again that is configured by this connection manager let's see if it works one row is gone over there 990 rows 999 rows came from CSV to capital the first and last name I'm assuming it got converted over here then I went to conditional split two rows were illogical it went to illogical 997, 997 rows got into SQL let's check notice the first and last name it's capitalized now it's an uppercase now and 997 records not 1000 records as per the original CSV file so everything is working fine as of now I'll stop it let me go back to requirement in the video 9 the previous video we did something in which we looped the files into a for each loop so that if there are multiple files multiple CSV files given by the client all will go through the same process that just a single file did right now so how do we do that now the requirement is that as of now only a single file the action is happening only on a single file called customers.csv now I want the action should happen on all the files or oh, all these things that are present over here whatever filtrations that is happening over here the same thing should happen for all the files but I don't want to create a sick project for each and every file it should happen in one go for that I'll go back to control flow in the control flow 
I need to introduce something that will loop to all the files, all the CSV files. Remember, there are other files also over there like TXE file, PPT file. So it will ignore all other extensions. It will focus only on a CSV format and all the files that are in CSV format, it will loop through everything and it will pick a single file once, do all the actions that are defined in data flow tab. It will go back. It will pick the second file. It will do all the actions on the second file, then the third file and until it finishes all the files that are in a particular folder. But how is that possible? Right now, if we see this connection manager that is defined on my source, if I right click, it is linked to a particular file. It is hard coded, which means it is static. It is not dynamic in nature. So I need to introduce some kind of a thing which will keep on changing the file name. For example, right now it's customers. Once customers is done, it should move to customers-copy.csv, then customers-copy1.csv and so on until it reaches the last one. So that is where we introduce something called as variables in the video 9. I'll do the same over here in the control flow tab anywhere. I will just right click. I will select variables. I'll click on a new and I'll say file way FK file variable and the file name would be in integer. No, it's going to be string. So I'll mention it as string. That's it. Now I know that I have a variable in which I will put in the file name, but I need some component so that it can iterate through all the files and it should be linked to the variable from which it can pick the file name. And that is why I'll go to SSI's toolbox and I will find uh, for each loop container. So in the for each loop container, I have to link this for each loop container to my variable. Let's do that. Edit. And where is the folder? I just have to give it a folder name. So the folder name is given what kind of file CSV variable mapping variable name is FK file variable that we just got, cre got created. I'm not entering anything in expressions as of now and I'm saying okay. So now my for each loop is linked to a variable which is a good thing but what will it do? It will just keep on iterating through a variable which is linked to a particular folder uh, and it will go through each and every CSV file. So if I just run this for each loop without this uh, data flow task, it will go to this folder. It will pick this name in the variable. Then it will pick this name, this name, this name, this name, but it will do nothing. What it has to do is all configured in our data flow task, which is over here. So I will drag and drop data flow task added into for each loop container. Now it is linked to this data flow task as well. So my for each loop will run. It will find the value of collection from this particular setting. It will find that in this particular folder, you have to go through all CSV files. Why? Because I am enumerating it for, for each file enumerator. How? Because my variable is mapped to it and I'll say, okay. But when we go into this data flow task, it is still hard coded over here through file connection manager and file connection manager. If you see, it is still hard coded to a single file, which is customers.csv. So we need to introduce something over here so that it can become dynamic. Right now, our for each loop is dynamic, but our data flow task is not. 
and that is why we need to do something over here in the connection manager of our source so i will right click over here i'll select properties and in properties there's something called as expressions i'll select expressions what are we doing we are setting a connection property over here so connection string and what expression in the expression when we click on this three dots button it will show us variables and variable out here and i'll say okay and i'll say okay so now my for each loop is going to pick value from this particular folder all the csv files and my data flow task under data flow task my flat file connection manager string is also mapped with this variable at this point i want to introduce a new topic something called as breakpoints i will right click on for each i will say edit breakpoint and there are many options over here where it can break which means that when i will execute a project it will break at a particular point on for each loop container sorry right click edit breakpoints so as of now i just want to break it when the on pre execute event and i'll say okay and same breakpoint i want to add over here you can add breakpoints on various other options uh, like on warning if there is an error then you can you know just wait over there add a breakpoint uh, but right now we'll just do it on on pre pre execute event and i'll say okay so i want to watch which particular file out of the 23 files that i have in the folder i want to watch it live when uh, this program is executing how will i do it let's me let me just run this program as of now so I'll just click on start because I have given a breakpoint it got stuck on for each loop and there's a watch window out here you see there are some options out here and there's a watch window out here if you don't find your variable out here you just type your name type the variable name and like fk file variable hit enter and it will show it in the watch window and once it is there you click on continue you see the break went to our data flow task there's a yellow arrow over here and over here the for each loop has passed the value of the file so it has first picked copy 10 um, let me just show you copy 10 it has picked this and I'll click on continue now it has picked copy 11 let's see what is there in the data flow it's still passing the rows thousand rows but it's it is stuck until I just click on continue and I keep changing the continue and it will keep on changing the name notice this over here uh, the variable is changing the name of the file every time I click on continue um, we would not see this if I would not had given the breakpoints because then it would run really very fast so because of the breakpoints, I can see this. And I will run it until it reaches the end. And I think this is the end. Yes, it's finished. Let me go back to SQL, select star from table customers. So before I even check how many records I get, let me calculate. I am expecting these three records to not be there. But I have not made any kind of incorrect data. I have not induced any kind of incorrect data in the remaining 23 uh, records, uh, 23 files. Each file has around 1000 records. So 1000 into 23, which is 23,000 records minus 3. So the result that I get should be 23,000 minus 3 because the, my, the three records are going to be these three records 0 100 and minus 23 they are not going to be in the database let's see if as per our theory this is correct or not 22997 23000 minus 3 that is 22997 and it is correct let's check our error file yes the 100 it's there let's check the in illogical data file minus 23 and 0 these two records are also there Let's go to our requirement. 
So we have loaded data from CSV into SQL. We have made first and last name capital. We have corrected data types. We have filtered incorrect and illogical data. We have done the same for 23 different CSV files in one go. Congratulations. Now comes the main topic for this particular video, which is deploying the package. Before we move to this particular topic, I want to show you something. I'll stop this package. And yeah, before I do that, I will just go to debug and I'll say delete all breakpoints. You can either go to individual and say uh, delete breakpoints or uh, edit breakpoint out here and say uncheck. Or you can just go to build, sorry, debug and say delete all breakpoints. And in one go, it will delete everything. So I've removed the breakpoints. And uh, before we go into deployment part, I want to show you something. There is something called as Solution Explorer on the right side. <clears throat> now look at the structure of a particular solution. On the top, there is solution. Then it has a project. Then it has some packages. If I right click on solution, I will have options like build the entire solution. If I go over here and I can have the option as add new item a new item, I can do a new SSIS package. I'm going to delete it, but for, for reference, I'm just going to show you, but I'm going to delete it right away. Uh, FK second package extension is DTSX. I'll say add. So in the solution, I will have some project.params, there are connection managers, then there's SSIS packages, FK second package, and this was the by default package. In solution, we can add new project integration services. We named the first project as FK recap and deployment. I'll say FK recap and deployment part two look at this and i'll say okay i don't want getting started so on top there is solution then i have project uh, i can have multiple projects in one solution and i under any project i have something called as packages there are parameters, there are connection managers, but the important part that we have to focus on is packages. So look at this image. Right on top, we have solution. A solution can have one, two, three, or as many projects as required. Every project will have packages. Now, again, the packages, remember I created the second package out here just a few seconds ago. There could be multiple packages in a single project. Don't get confused. Look at this diagram solution, different projects, and there are different packages. Now the deployment is done in two ways. It is a project deployment or a package deployment. So I can either deploy a single package. Let's say I want to deploy FK second package. I can only deploy this particular package, ignoring all the other packages that are present in my project, ignoring all other projects as well. Or I can deploy the entire project. Let me take you to the image again. So I have a solution under solution. I have different projects under different projects. I can have different packages. Now there are two ways of deploying. One is project deployment and one is package deployment. We are going to focus on the project deployment. I'll also show you how you can pick only a single package. Before that, let me just delete the second project that I created. We don't need it. No, don't save. And let me create the second package also because there's nothing in it. It's blank. If you see, it's blank. But the main package, we have everything that we did in the past one hour or so. Right click, delete. 
I hope I'm not deleting the correct one. Yeah. So this package is what we want to deploy, but we will not deploy a single package. We are going to deploy the project. Why is this requirement? Why do we have to deploy it? Can't we just click on start over here? It is so simple. We have been doing this since past nine videos. This is a 10th video and we are doing it by start and it's working. It's getting the data as required. We are getting the data in our table with all the transformations, capitalization of character of, of data. Then we have filtration of data, removing error data, data type change. We are doing everything that is required. We are getting our expected results. Whatever is the requirement is getting fulfilled. Then why is deployment required? The simple answer is this particular package that you have, whatever work that you have done, whatever coding you have done, you are going to give it to a user, right? It is not something that you are doing it for yourself. You will be giving this particular bundle to someone else. Who is that someone else? That is your customer or client. Now, are you expecting that all the clients that you have will have this Visual Studio SQL Server data tools, a licensed copy of the same? Do you think even if they have a licensed copy of Visual Studio data tools, do you think they will have a resource who is good at using it or who knows how to get into Visual Studio and which project to run, how to start it? Is it good from the security point of view of your code? And if they have a resource who is capable to do this, why will they just hire you to make the project? So there are different reasons, endless, endless uh, arguments that we can make why we have to make a deployment project, why we cannot just run it from here. The very basic thing is because client will not really be that much tech savvy to go and run from Visual Studio. Let me take you to my solution explorer again. Now to deploy. As I told you in this particular diagram, there are two ways project deployment and package deployment. Right now we'll focus on project deployment. Let me take you to solution explorer. I'll right click on my solution explorer. I will say open folder in file explorer. Now these are just some files. Whatever you see over here, you see it in a very good way, but these are just files. For example, if you open DTSX uh, view code, it is just a XML file. Whatever changes we make in DTSX, basically in the background, it looks very good to you that you're dragging and dropping the components, you're configuring the details, but in the background, it is just generating an XML file. Now imagine if you have to do all this by yourself coding each and every line, it would get very complicated. So these are basically all the files. I'm going to solution explorer. I'll say open folder in file explorer. And uh, this is the second project that we created. I'm deleting it. The first project, I'll go to bin development and I will get the is pack file. So whenever you create a project in the background, it is creating a file which is with the format as is pack. You can actually use this file. It is an integration services project file. You can double click on it and it will open the integration services deployment wizard. I'll click on next and over here I'm getting two options project deployment file integration services catalog. So I'm going to select uh, project deployment file and I'll say next and uh, I'll just enter server name copy pasted uh, from the SQL server and uh, I'll say connect. When I say connect the path is activated. I'll click on browse but it is giving me an error. Now look at this error. This is something that you may also get when you are attempting to practice it. It says integration services catalog was not found on the server instance, the server name. To deploy a project to the server, you must create a SSIS DB catalog. And how do we do that? For that, we have to switch to Microsoft SQL. Let me just close it and I'll close this as well. I'll go to object explorer. I'll say connect to database engine. Now remember I can also go to integration. I'm not going there right now. I'm going to database engine uh, and I'll just connect. 
now if you see over here so far we have just seen databases but there is an option called integration services catalogs this is what it was talking about if I just click on plus sign there is nothing out here I'll right click and say create catalog until this catalog is not created it will not let us proceed so I'll just give it a quick password and I'll say okay and let it create it so now the SSIS DB is created if you go back to the image that I have shown to you in the project deployment you deploy it on SSIS DB in package deployment you can deploy it in msdb or file system i'll show you this as well but right now we just created ssisdb which was missing getting back over here um, i'll say browse now it shows ssisdb under that i will just create a new folder for my own project that i am deploying fk first deployment now it's folder i'll say okay i'll say next and I'll say next and I'll say deploy deployment project is all passed and I will say close and if you see right click here refresh fk first deployment projects fk recap and deployment packages package now just see this let me get uh, SQL Server data tools as well look at the side by side the FK recap and deployment is my project FK deploy recap and deployment and under that package.dtsx is my package over here so now I just close it close it minimize it and go to my database my database was FK recap SSIS and you have the table of select star from customers sorry TBL customers it has 22997 records I'm going to truncate it truncate table TBL customers and now select it has zero records so my data from this table is gone vanished usually what I used to do is I used to go to Visual Studio I used to click on start but now my project is deployed I don't need it let me not cancel it I'll just get object explorer so I don't need to just run from visual studio I don't have visual studio on my system I will just go to integration services catalog I'll click on package and I'll right click on package I'll say execute and I will just say ok It's saying the operation has started. Would you like to open overview report now? I'll say yes. Let me show you how good the report looks like. It will give you all the details. So the same thing that we are doing from the Visual Studio. Now it is deployed on our SQL server via integration services. I can right click on the package and now let's see how many records have come 22997 which means that the same thing is done via this package but the client will not go to package and right click and execute every single time right they will just put this package in a SQL server agent job and they can schedule this ETL to run every single hour every six hours every once in every 24 hours whatever is the requirement as per their business and this is how the ETL will work so everything is good and nice so far we have completed the first point second point third fourth fifth six everything so far we have deployed the project to run from SS MS which is a great thing now you know how to just start a project and work it end to end you know how to create your own ETL just in 10 videos congratulations but one last requirement is there I know this video is getting long but I want you guys before <laughs> there's one more requirement right now 
in our project we have this variable that we got created this variable is saving data and based on this particular variable name it picks up the file from my folder and from folder it changes the name of the file and gives it for further processing in my computer it belongs to this particular part it says c users f combati desktop knowledge ssi scores and so on but on the client machine do you think that i will have the same path do you think that the client will have exactly the users based on my name then desktop and exactly the same location with the same name of the folder there's a possibility not a possibility there's a strong chance that the client will have a different name of the folder in a different location where his files are located but my variable over here it's now hard coded with this for each loop and my variable has something defined over here that you have to go to this path pick all the csv files so when i am deploying the project on the client side when i have already deployed it and right click and configure it when i want to show them that they have to go through a different particular folder structure the variable is not going to help me there and that is why i have to introduce a concept called parameters so far we have studied the tab called control flow data flow execution results now it's time for you to understand another tab called parameters right now the parameters is all blank i'm going to create a new fk first parameter it's going to contain the folder structure so yes a string and in the value i'm going to put a default value which can change for example if the client for some reason they don't actually modify or configure the parameter so by default it should take some value right it should not just say that there is no value in it so the default value i'm going to enter over here so what is the name of my folder structure over here it's going to be this directory so see i have not given the name of the file i have just given the name of the folder and that's it save it close it so getting to my solution explorer now and uh, opening my package so right now in for each loop we have uh, mentioned in the collections that you have to go to this folder and csv file but now i am changing it from variable to parameter because variable is an internal thing parameter is going to be the external too so i'll go to properties and i'm going to give the property for directory and ex expressions i will just get this expression builder you see now i'm also getting the variable that i had created before and also getting the parameter i'm going to select parameter over here and i'll say okay i'll say okay here again variable mapping expressions not making changes anywhere else just clicking on okay so now it's is linked to the parameter not the variable but how do we differentiate whether it's linked to the parameter and not the variable because it's going to go to the same path anyway so for avoiding that confusion i will just go to deployment and parameters my folder and uh, i'm going to select all the files out here i'm going to copy it and i'm going to give it into folder and uh, i'll just name it checking for parameters and i'll paste it over here i'll copy this folder name i'll come back to my parameter in the default i will mention this particular checking for parameters folder name and i will give a breakpoint over here remember breakpoints we just did it okay and i'll do a breakpoint here as well i'll say okay 
and uh, I'll go to SQL I'll truncate the tables out here select zero rows and let's check start let's check checking for parameters you see which means that right now we have configured the parameter it is not picking the value from the variable it is picking the value from the parameter this is how we can make the difference out of it okay, I don't need to run the entire file I just wanted to demo this that it's picking value from the parameter I'll stop it and I'm sure there are some records that have come up because I just ran one file I'll truncate it back to zero Let's go back to our SSMS. Uh, let me just delete it before deleting. Let me show you one more thing. When you try to delete it, it will give you an error because there is a package in it. So first you will have to delete the project. Okay. And then you delete this. Okay. We'll go back to SSM uh, to data tools and uh, open folder in file explorer remember I'm looking for a spec file I'm going to show you the entire thing again about the deployment a spec file is here double click on it click on next next I need the server name copy paste connect browse new folder fk parameter project okay okay next next deploy and close going back to SQL refreshing under SSDB I have FK parameter project under projects I have this and the packages I have the package now look at the configuration out here remember the reason when why we did it was because what if the client has a different folder structure what if the client does not have the files in the same folder structure so I will go to right click on the project configure and this connection manager out here and there's parameters out here the parameter is FK first parameter remember I'm going to SSDT to inform you FK first parameter look at this this is a parameter we just created and the reason we created is what if the default value that is given is not the same at the client side that is why we can edit it over here and whatever the folder structure if client is on C users and deploy or data if client has data files on this particular location they can use this particular location edit it and say okay and it will work anyway but no you won't believe me let me show you um, again all these files I'm going to deployment and parameters and I'm going to create a new folder out here and let's say uh, test deploy param and I'm deleting checking for parameters I'm deleting data from here as well so now the only way it will load data is if it is in the test deploy for param and I'm going to copy this particular file and I'm going to configure over here and I'll do this I'll edit value I'll enter it over here so my folder structure is test deploy param if my theory is correct it will load the data anyway without giving any error and the way I can prove it is because I have deleted the other folders it does not have any other folder from where it can pick the data it has only this folder which I have mentioned not in my visual studio I mentioned it in the parameters in edit value it is not mentioned anywhere else I'll click on OK I'll click on OK and I'll go to packages and before that let me show you the table is still zero there's no bluff out here execute and uh, okay yes I want to see the report please show me some greens it's all green and uh, select 
I have the data out here. So in this video, we have learned a recap of all the concepts so far, how to deploy the project, how to use parameters, uh, breakpoints, and uh, now you're qualified to make your own ETL. You should be proud of it. In the next video, we'll begin with the second pillar of MSBI, that is SSAS. <clears throat> Before we jump to SSAS, I'll shoot a video uh, to bridge knowledge gap about how SSIS is linked with SSAS. But is SSIS over? No, I have just shown you the basics of SSIS. Uh, this is the most basic ETL that you can create using the 10 videos that I have demonstrated in this particular series. There are some advanced SSIS topics like SCD type 0, type 1, lookup, optimization, sort, merge, merge joins, transactions, checkpoints, script tasks, send mail tasks, script component, partitions, CDC, buffer size tuning, multi-threading, data quality services, asynchronous, synchronous, full blocking, semi-blocking, page split, rollap, molap, holap, data tabs, and a lot more. So there are a lot of advanced topics in SSIS. When you work on a project, the advanced topics are going to be much more helpful. But that will be as per the personal one-on-one -on -one trainings that I will conduct. You can email me on fakhruddinkhambati at gmail.com uh, to get more details on it. But if you wish to continue with just the basic of SSIS, these videos are good to go. You can easily create your own ETL uh, with the basic concepts. But next that we are going to do is much more interesting topic, SSIS. AS. So stay tuned and please, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you like this video. Until then, this is Fakhruddin Khambati saying goodbye and take care.